good morning to all of you <clears throat> so in previous classes we have studied to draw the constant specific volume line constant relativity line constant dvt line and constant omega line these lines as you can see in the figure so these are the uh, vertical lines are the constant dbt line and straight horizontal lines are the constant humidity ratio line and this inclined line this inclined line this inclined line is called constant specific volume line and this curvatures these are the relative humidity line that we have studied so in today's class we will learn how to draw the weight bulb temperature line so that is called constant thermodynamic weight bulb temperature line so we have already studied the derivation of this cost thermodynamic weight bulb temperature during the class hours so now we consider the same situation consider a long duct adiabatic duct okay so that air becomes saturated when it reach at exit point that's why we have consider a long duct and unsaturated air uh, is going into this adiabatic duct so consider the unsaturated air having enthalpy h humidity ratio omega and temperature t okay so when it becomes saturated the condition of air becomes t star omega star h star so how it becomes saturated because of evaporation of water particle from this sun so initially the temperature of this sump was same as t so when it reached at steady state then the temperature of this water sum also become t star and the temperature of exit air that is saturated also becomes t star so which is lower temperature than this dry bulb temperature okay so this t star is considered as a thermodynamic weight bulb temperature for t so this t star is a, a thermodynamic thermodynamic weight bulb weight bulb temperature for moist air for moist air of temperature moist for moist air of of dbt t and humidity ratio omega so this t star which is the temperature of saturated air is the thermodynamic weight bulb temperature for this unsaturated air okay so we have derived the expression so we will again apply the same expression to draw the constant weight bulb temperature line so we will apply the mass balance again mass balance for the dry air so dry air is constant so dry air in is equal to dry air out we are considering the mass of dry air for steady flow if you apply the mass balance for water vapor then the mass flow rate of water vapor that is uh, coming into the control volume along with dry air is m dot v in and similarly the mass of water that is evaporated so rate of water vapor that's why it is written dot above the m so it is the rate of water that is evaporated is equal to mass of water vapor that is going out from the control volume along with dry air is mv out so we are considering only the water vapor mass balance so mv in plus mf is equal to mv out where mf is the rate of mass of water evaporated so this mf can be written as mv out this mf can be written as mv out minus mv in okay so this is the mass balance now we'll apply the energy balance this we have already applied in the derivation of thermodynamic weight bulb temperature so if we can apply the energy balance then we need to write the expression in terms of enthalpy so this h is the enthalpy of incoming air so m da into h because h is expressed in terms of per kg of dry air that's why we have multiplied the mass flow rate of dry air which is constant then the mass of water vapor that is evaporated which is m dot f so enthalpy will be hf because it is a liquid water so enthalpy we can write as a hf star because this energy balance we are applying when the steady state is raised when the steady state temperature 
T star is reached. So we are applying this energy balance when the temperature of this sump becomes T star and the temperature of uh, this outgoing air becomes T star. So we are applying energy balance equation when the uh, steady state condition has been achieved. Okay. So this is uh, energy balance equation. So outlet is the MDA and H star is the enthalpy of uh, saturated air at T star. So this is the H star. So after simplifying, we are dividing this mass of dry air. So this we have already seen in the derivation. So this becomes H and MB out divided by MDA. We can write as omega out MB in by MDA. We can write as omega in and this is written as same and omega out. We can see this omega out is omega star so that's why omega out we are written omega star similarly omega in omega in is omega so that's why we have considered omega so omega star minus omega hf star is equal to hf now by rearranging this equation now we have h minus h minus omega hf star is equal to h star minus omega star hf star so this combined term h star minus omega star hf star is indicated by sigma star and this term is called as a sigma function so this h minus omega hf star is equal to h star minus omega star hf star uh, is introduced as a new term that is called sigma function uh, this was used earlier times when we used to evaluate the property from the psychometric chart uh, when the softwares are when softwares were not available for finding out the properties of moisture. Now we have a lot of software to determine the property of moisture now. So this term is rarely used. But if you want to draw the how to draw the constant wet bulb temperature line, then we need to introduce this term because this is the basis for to draw the constant wet bulb temperature line. Okay, so what is this sigma function? So sigma function is basically uh, sigma function is the enthalpy at saturated wet bulb temperature. This is the enthalpy at saturated. This is the enthalpy at saturated wet bulb temperature less the enthalpy of liquid water at same temperature. So this is the less amount of this quantity. So the, uh, we are uh, we, uh, we are subtracting this uh, omega star H F star from this H star. So this is the less the enthalpy of liquid water at same temperature. Okay. So again, we have written here H minus omega H F star and H star minus omega H F star. Okay. So this left term, we can say this value, this value each correspond to the inlet condition. So this H and omega in this term, this H and omega are correspond to the inlet condition. For example, T and omega for example t we are considering 30 degree celsius so this h is for corresponding to 30 degree celsius and omega is also corresponding to this temperature okay but this is for unsaturated air so basically this air is unsaturated unsaturated air unsaturated air is going into this duct so basically this is the condition for unsaturated air and this term h star minus omega star h f star it is also a sigma function, but this value, this value is correspond to the outlet condition which is saturated. Okay, so this is because all have a star term H star, omega star, HF star. So we are indicating the saturated condition as a star. So this value is correspond to uh, saturated condition. Okay. Now. Now here it is written that there are, there can be several combinations of T and omega. This T and omega, so there can be a several combination of T and omega. It may be T1 omega 1, T2 omega 2, T3 omega 3 or T n omega n of inlet air which can result in the same saturated exit air temperature T star or some temperature T star for adiabatic saturator. 
so what is the meaning of this sentence meaning of this uh, we may have different inlet condition t1 omega 1 t2 omega 2 t3 omega 3 t4 omega 4 and many inlet condition which they all give the same outlet condition t star okay so same outlet condition for example this outlet condition we are considering 20 degree celsius okay we are considering 20 degree celsius to ye sare inlet condition if we are considering this is 30 degree celsius air 40 degree celsius air uh, 45 degree celsius here 50 degree celsius here this all temperature will give the same temperature which is the thermodynamic weight bulb temperature is ka matlab ye hai ki ye sare condition ke air ek hi weight bulb temperature ko produce karenge jo ki 20 degree celsius hai is ka matlab iske liye bhi weight bulb temperature 20 degree celsius hai इस T2 omega 2 के लिए भी weight bulb temperature 20 degree Celsius है, इस T3 omega 3 के लिए भी weight bulb temperature 24, 20 degree Celsius है, इस T4 omega 4 के लिए भी weight bulb temperature 20 degree Celsius है, इसका मतलब अगर मैं इन 1, 2, 3, 4 point को join कर दू, जिसका सबका weight bulb temperature 20 degree Celsius है, तो हमको as a constant weight bulb temperature मिल जाए, okay? So the meaning of this sentence is that there can be a several combination of T and omega of inlet air which can result in the same saturated exit air temperature T star or some temperature for adiabatic saturator. So this figure mein, agar maalo mein 30 degree Celsius ka apply kar raho, for example, maalo iska weight bulb temperature 20 degree Celsius. Yehi 20 degree Celsius weight bulb temperature 40 degree Celsius ke air ke bhi aa sakta hai, 45 degree Celsius ke bhi same weight bulb temperature aa sakta hai, 50 degree Celsius ke bhi same weight bulb temperature aa sakta hai. Bhala hi humidity ratio in sab mein alag ho, lakin in sab ka weight bulb temperature 20 degree Celsius hai. Iska matlab in sab point ko 1, 2, 3 jitne bhi point hai, agar inko mein join kar du, तो मुझको constant weight bulb temperature मिल जाएगा. So our next objective is to find the this 1, 2, 3, 4 condition so that we can draw the constant weight bulb temperature line. Okay. So here it is again written that Thus, all inlet air condition that result in the same exit air temperature which is saturated have the same wet bulb temperature that we have uh, discussed. Okay. So, a line passing through all this point is a constant wet bulb temperature line. So, we will find these T1, T2, T3, T4, omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4 condition and we can join all this point and we can draw the constant wet bulb temperature line. Okay. So, let us consider a saturated air of 20 degree Celsius. So, consider an example. So, we will understand this concept of constant weight bulb temperature line using this example. So, let us consider a saturated air of 20 degree Celsius dBT. Matlab, humara jo air hai, wo saturate hoke 20 degree Celsius ka ho ja raha hai. Thik hai? Ab hum different inlet condition find karenge जिससे वो 20 डिग्री सेल्सियस प्रोड्यूस हो जाए सबके लिए प्रोड्यूस हो जाए 20 डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके सो फॉर सैचुरेटेड एयर सो दिस इज द कंडीशन ऑफ सैचुरेटेड एयर सो इट सैचुरेटेड कंडीशन द ड्राई बल्ब टेंपरेचर इज एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द वेट बल्ब टेंपरेचर बिकॉज़ इट कंटेन द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ मॉइस्चर आल्सो इक्वल टू द ड्यू पॉइंट टेंपरेचर तो सैचुरेशन कंडीशन में dBt is equal to WBt is equal to dew point temperature and we are considering the temperatures of saturated air as a 20 degree Celsius. So now we will denote this condition in the psychometric chart. So from 20 degree Celsius draw the vertical line, it cut the saturation line, this cut the saturation line 100% line at point A. So this is the outlet condition. So this is basically point A is outlet condition. outlet condition and outlet condition have dbt equal to wbt equal to dpt so if dbt is 20 degree celsius then wbt is also 20 degree celsius and dpt is also 
20 degree Celsius. Now we will find different input conditions for same T star. So same 20 degree Celsius produce करने के लिए different inlet condition find करेंगे. Okay. So here the R H equal to P W B by saturation water vapor. So 100% so RH will be 1 so this is equal to this first find T1 omega 1 for producing T star is equal to 20 degree Celsius okay point A for this condition let us the wet bulb temperature is 20 degree Celsius okay so point A so this is point A this point is point A apply sigma function equation that sigma function equation apply the sigma function equation that we have studied here Sorry, huh? sorry. This apply this equation we will apply again. Okay. This is the sigma function equation. So apply sigma function equation h minus omega hf star is equal to h star minus omega star hf star. So this is the exit condition. Exit condition. The enthalpy omega hf these are for the exit condition which is saturated. And we are considering 20 degree Celsius we have taken in the example. So we have 20 degree Celsius. Now we will find the this h and omega for different <coughs> inlet conditions so, so consider if we take t1 30 degree celsius okay so we are considering 30 degree celsius so this is the 30 degree celsius line so consider 30 degree celsius line okay 30 degree celsius line so <coughs> this h is correspond to 30 degree celsius <coughs> similarly this omega is also correspond to 30 degree Celsius. Okay. <coughs> now we will <coughs> apply this enthalpy sigma function equation. So first we will find this H star minus omega star H star 20 degree Celsius. So first we will find this right side term. Okay. So we have already studied the three equation to determine the enthalpy. So first we will find this moisture. Enthalpy of moisture, enthalpy of moisture at 20 degree Celsius. So this is first we will find this term. Enthalpy of moisture. So which is equal to enthalpy of dry air. So this is dry air and this, this part is enthalpy of water vapor. Okay, so we have studied the three equation. So we will use third equation which is very easy. So third equation, this is for dry air and third equation was simply the Hg at 20 degree Celsius. Okay. Omega star at 20 degree Celsius and 100% Rh from the chart. So because we know the two property 20 degree Celsius and 100% Rh and barometric pressure we are considering 101.325 uh, kilopascal. Okay. So for this condition, we get the intersection point A. So from this A, we can draw the horizontal line we can draw the horizontal line it will cut at the omega axis so we can determine the omega a from the chart okay so from the chart this omega star because it is a saturated that's why it is written as omega star so this value is 0 0.01472 kilogram of water vapor per kg of dry air. okay so enthalpy of Moisture at 20 degree Celsius is now omega star value is put it here. So this value is here. HF 20 degree Celsius, one point specific heat of dry air is 1.005 and 2538.2. This value is the enthalpy. This is Hg, Hg at 20 degree Celsius. So from steam table, this value you will find from steam table because it is a water vapor. So this is we find from steam table. Now H, this is the 20 degree Celsius is the 57.46. So this is the enthalpy of moisture at 20 degree Celsius. Now we will find the second term, this omega star, HF star. This H star is 
57 this is 57.46 that we have obtained 57.46 so this is 57.46 now we'll find the second term omega star hf star okay so hf at 20 degree celsius hf star saturated hf star at 20 degree celsius is 83.9 kilojoule per kc so hf star is basically the uh, liquid water so we will see steam table value hf data from 20 degree celsius the value is 83.9 kilojoule per kc okay and omega star we have already calculated that is uh, 0 0.01472 hf is the f indicate the condition of liquid so liquid we find from the steam table hf 20 degree so why it is written star because the temperature of that water that water is also at the uh, thermodynamic weight bulb temperature so after achieving steady state water uh, the sump water and exit air become the same temperatures that's why it is H hf star okay now we will put all this value so 57.46 and this 83.49 and this omega value okay in the right side part the left side is h1 minus omega 1 83.9 this we want to find okay so h1 how to find 30 degree celsius we are considering the outlet inlet temperature is 30 degree celsius we have taken suppose the uh, inlet condition is 30 degree celsius okay so 30 degrees so this is the enthalpy of dry air and this is the enthalpy of water vapor so again we will apply the same 1.005 and 30 omega 1 now hg at 30 degree celsius is 2556.4 kilojoule per kg uh, okay so we will put this value h1 into 30 here so this value this value is here here minus omega 1 into 83.9 is equal to 56.22 56.22 we will uh, have this value okay so 56.22 is this value if we subtract uh, this 0 0.01472 into 83.9 from this value 57.46 so if we subtract this value from 57.46 we will get this 56.22 now the, in this equation we have only one unknown omega 1 so one equation one unknown so we can easily find the omega 1 that is 0 0.01054 so in this condition we are considering 30 degree celsius omega 1 is 0 0.01054 so from that omega 1 we draw the straight line we draw the straight line at it intersect the 30 degree celsius vertical line this so this point is t1 point okay so for 30 degree celsius for 30 degree celsius and omega 1 of 0 0.054 the wet bulb temperature is 20 degree celsius this is thermodynamic wet bulb temperature is 20 degree celsius now we will another condition we will find another condition t2 and omega 2 to produce same wet bulb temperature so that we can join this uh, t1 omega 1 t2 omega 2 line 30 degree and this value is also producing the same wet bulb temperature 20 degree celsius if t2 and omega 2 also produce the same exit saturated air temperature then we can join this t1 t2 omega 1 omega 2 condition so that's it is t1 condition 1 so this is the condition 1 this is the condition 1 now we'll find the condition 2 so now we will find another inlet condition t2 omega 2 for producing same saturated air of t star of 20 degree celsius of point a so let t2 is 40 degree celsius so now we draw the 40 degree celsius line so this is 30 so 40 will be here so this is 40 degree celsius line so this t2 is 40 degree celsius line so this uh, 
line pink line is 40 degree celsius line okay now we will find the omega value for this 40 degree celsius now we will again apply the same he sigma function equation so h minus omega h star h star minus omega h star and this value is unique for 20 degree celsius because this is saturated that we have already calculated in the previous case 56.22 we have already calculated this 56.22, 56.22. So because this is the 20 degree Celsius and saturated RH equal to 100%. So this value will be the same. Now the another inlet condition is 70 degree Celsius temperature. So right side will be the same as earlier. Now this will be the H2 and this will be the omega 2. H2 minus omega 2 HF star 56.22. Now this 2 is correspond to 40 degree Celsius, the H2 is correspond to 40 degree Celsius and omega 2 is also correspond to 40 degree Celsius. So this H2 1.00540 and omega 2, this we want to determine and this Hg at 40 degree Celsius is 2574 from the steam table and this HF is same still it is 3.9 because the exit air and some water is still same even we are considering the different temperature okay now we can find the omega 2 so omega 2 is 0 0.006432 kg of water vapor per kg of dry air so now from this value we draw the horizontal line so this 0 0.064 so 0 0.0064 may be considering this point for example we are considering this omega 2 omega 2 is what is the omega 2 omega 2 is 0 0.006432 0 0.006432 which is less than this value so obviously it will be below this 0 0.010 is greater than this so now if we draw the horizontal line from this value from the chart it will intersect the 40 degree celsius at this point for example okay so this is the another condition so this is the condition two now we can join this line condition one condition two okay so now we can join this line condition and by this way we can draw the wet bulb temperature line so we have connected this saturated exit point with this inlet point sorry this inlet point with this inlet point t1 this is the inlet condition and this temperature is for example 30 degree celsius this is 30 degree celsius so this this line is called constant WBT line or constant thermodynamic weight bulb temperature line. Okay. So, parallel similarly, we can draw for another condition also. So, this line like this, this is the nature of constant weight bulb temperature line. So, slope of the constant weight bulb temperature line is lower than the specific volume line. If we draw the specific volume line, specific volume line is slightly higher slope. So this is the specific volume line. This is the specific volume line. So specific volume line have higher slope as compared to constant weight bulb temperature line. So if we draw this is the nature of, uh, this is the constant weight bulb temperature line. So slope is like this. So this is the theta. However, the slope of constant specific volume line is like this. So, which have higher theta? Okay. So, this is a specific volume line, a specific volume line and this is WBT line, constant WBT line. Okay. So here it is again written that same that we have drawn in the figure same line it is written that similarly we can find other inlet condition T3 omega 3 just we have find the T2 omega 2 
similarly we can find t3 omega 3 t4 omega 4 t5 omega 5 and by joining these inlet condition and outlet condition outlet condition is fixed we have considered 20 degree celsius we can draw constant with bulb temperature lines okay so this is about the construction of constant weight bulb temperature line how we draw so this sigma function is very important to draw the constant weight bulb temperature line this sigma function value this sigma function this is basically sigma function this sigma function value is constant constant along weight bulb temperature line so on inlet condition if we are considering t1 omega 1 if we consider t2 omega 2 if we consider t3 omega 3 if we consider t4 omega 4 if they all produce the same outlet condition like t star which is 20 degree celsius and this 20 degree celsius is the weight bulb temperature for t1 omega 1 also and this 20 degree celsius is the weight bulb temperature for this air and this is for this air also and for this air and if we join all this one two three four line then we can get the constant weight bulb temperature line okay so thank you